My name is Jeffrey Davis. Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. And we're, again, as we do every day, uh, featuring the success of entrepreneurship. Our next guest is Cheryl Pinarchuk of Murphy and King, correct? Correct. Great. Well done. Cheryl, tell us a little bit about Murphy and King and your practice, what you do. Sure. Murphy and King is a Boston-based law firm. We've got about 35 attorneys. Mm -hmm. And as a group, you know, we specialize in the resolution primarily of business disputes, businesses fighting with other businesses. Litigation? Litigation is part of it. You know, we also, it's a big part of it, but we also do a lot of what I call business consulting, um, litigation avoidance, and that's mm. a big part of my practice, which is meeting with people ahead of time, meeting with startups, meeting with employers, meeting with folks in advance to see if we can head off some of that litigation, which can be really expensive and time consuming. What are the legal pitfalls that startups repeatedly make in your mind? Well, it's not even just in my mind. It's in the last couple of years. <laughs> in I mean, reality. The, the, in reality. And I, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, three or four cases right now that are either ongoing or that I just resolved. And, um, you know, one of the one of the big issues is that they don't sit down at the beginning, the founders, right, and figure out what the deal is going to be amongst themselves. That's the that's number one. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? What are my expectations? What are your expectations? And if we have some problems, how are we going to resolve those amongst ourselves? You got to do that at the beginning. I, re I refer to it as the startup prenup. Right? You want to get the startup prenup in place. Everybody's on the same page. We know what the expectations are. And as problems arise, we have a mechanism in order to deal with it. You talk about the term deal, um, uh, uh, making the deal clear among co founders. What do you mean by that? You got to get it in writing. You need a founder's agreement. Again, that's my you know, startup prenup, right? Which is, you got to sit down in a meeting and you have to decide all of these things that we just talked about and put it down on a piece of paper. Look, nobody wants to hire a lawyer at the beginning. Lawyers are you have expensive. To, they cost money. I agree with you. They talk too much. They talk too much. They're, you know. They always take 10 minutes for a two minute conversation. Right. And it takes six <laughs> pages to explain a very simple concept. And so, again, getting it down in writing, you know, having it documented, preferably by a lawyer is to me the most important thing that as you're starting a company you should do get the startup prenup in place you know another thing you talk about because we've uh, we've we've gone over some material offline is expanding the team without considering the legal implications mm -hmm. can you talk to us a little bit about that as well yeah and that's huge so you know, you're excited. You've got a new product. You've got a new development. It's and you're what running happens. a thousand miles an hour and you're right. not really stopping to consider what you're doing. You're bringing people on. They're excited about what you're doing. You know, they'll say, don't worry about paying me right now. Right. Deferred compensation. Don't worry about paying me. You can pay me later. I'm fine with that. Um, give me some stock options. That's fine. Give me some stock, you know, in, in lieu of paying me any money. You know, those are two of the types of things that I see all the time. And the employee is good with it. The employer is good with it. And everybody goes on their way. Well, then what happens is there's a problem. The employee isn't doing what the employer wants them to do. The expectations change. The employee says, wow, I just found out my wife's having a baby or I'm having a baby, I actually need a steady paycheck and I need to go. And all of that deferred compensation that you, you know, owe me, I need it now. The company says, well, I don't have that now. She files a wage an hour, or he files a wage an hour claim. And the law says, unless you have structured this thing right from the beginning, all of those wages are due, you can't defer them unless you structure it right. And in Massachusetts, if you don't pay them, it's triple damages, so triple the amount that you owe the person and the president and the treasurer and anybody making those decisions about the payment of wages are on the hook personally. Mm. So the company doesn't have the money to pay it. They're coming after your house. So these are the types of things. Are there ways to do it? Are there, are there smart ways to use deferred compensation, legal ways? Absolutely. Are there smart and legal ways to issue stock as a form of compensation? Absolutely.